Welcome back to another SCBWI featured illustrator interview. My name is Tamika Grooms and I'm the design and illustration manager for SCBWI. Every month we select an illustrator member to spotlight on the SCBWI website and social media pages to highlight the work that they're doing in the children's illustration market. This month's featured illustrator is Tatiana Gardell. Tatiana, thank you so much for joining us for a little chat today. I'm so happy to have you here. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Wonderful. So I want to hop right into it. Um, I really like to learn where our illustrators um, started their journey in children's book illustration. Can you share a little bit about that and just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to this, uh, this career path? Okay, so um, I'm originally from Brazil um, and I attended uh, a school for painting, I have a BFA in painting. Um, and I just decided to become a children's book illustrator after moving to the US. Um, growing up, I've always um, loved like animation, like reading comics, and this storytelling aspect of the things that I loved as a child always stuck with me. And um, in Brazil, unfortunately, I don't think we have the many opportunities that we have here. So this is something that came to me later in life. But um, as soon as I moved here and I figured out what I wanted to do professionally, learning the culture and learning the language, I um, enrolled um, in a continued education class in children's book at the School of Visual Arts. And that's how my career started. But also like in children's books, I feel everything that I learned and everything that I learned come together. Because to me, um, it's a blend between painting and animation and education. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about you know, children's books is that you can mix so many different aspects of the knowledge base that you have. Um, I, well, let me say it this way. I know that a lot of people who start in children's books have had other professional lives before they, you know, maybe come to writing or, or illustration, but those things don't get negated. They just get added into the mix of who you are as a creative person. So I really like to uh, ask people, you know, what was their, their, what did, did they always want to be an illustrator or a writer? Um, and if not, what were they doing before? Because that kind of informs who they are as a creative person going forward. So um, I like asking that question. So thank you for answering. Um, what are your favorite materials that you like to use? Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so originally I'm a traditional artist. Um, I paint with watercolor and color pencil. However, currently I'm working traditionally and the way I transition was a very, like, it was a process for me to transition from traditional to a digital. When I first tried to draw digitally, it wasn't just working because I, I feel the material, like the tools are so different. Um, but to me, it was a natural process from like, when I was scanning my images and editing on the computer to then uh, doing mixed media work like half tradition, half digitally. And nowadays I'm working fully traditional. Yeah. Except like when I do my thumbnails and stuff as to do uh, digitally, oh, traditionally. But as soon as I start uh, finalizing the piece, I, I do it on the computer. Um, you know, that's one of the, the things that people talk about all the time is like, should you work digitally? Should you work traditionally? And some people do both and some people start traditional and leave, uh, I'm sorry, start traditional and leave that behind. And some people, you know, they figure out what they need to do for their artwork. Um, and one is not better than the other. You know, it just depends on how you want to work. So um, I've kind of made that transition to digital as well. Sometimes I, I long for the days of me using traditional only. So um, so anyway, you, uh, that's my little vent. <laughs> yeah. um, to me, one important thing was like to mimic my traditional work. I didn't want it to look uh, digital. So that's also part of the process and what I was aiming for when I started experimenting with digital tools. 
Um, I want to hop over and share um, your website because mm -hmm. I know that there's lots of wonderful artwork on here. We'll also show the one that is featured for this month as well. So can you see my website? Yes. Okay. All right. So I want you to feel free to talk about these pieces, talk about your inspiration um, and anything you want to share about these pieces. I'm just going to kind of start with the first one here and mm -hmm. scroll through. Uh, so this is, this is interesting. Um, not necessarily something you see in traditional illustration for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, children's illustration. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this piece. Well, this piece, it started as a dream. It didn't, in my dream, it didn't look quiet like this. Um, but I remember waking up and doing a quick sketch. Um, and it had to be, had to do with my mother as well. So later on, I, I started like digging um, into this dream and this idea of like mother creation, mother nature. And um, in Brazil, we have uh, this um, Afro-Brazilian religion called Candomblé, where uh, they worship the Orishas, who are the divine forces of nature. So I was also inspired by that. Like this, this image doesn't um, represent a specific Orisha because this came from a dream. It's more a personal interpretation, but I was, was definitely inspired by that as well. Um, and to me also like the, and these are the, the symbols that I, I gave meaning to, um, like the snakes come out of her hand. To me, it means like knowledge and like the, the earth, like, and coming from the hand that has the historically the labor work. And I also chose red um, because of blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and in her other hand has, she has this uh, ball of energy. And that, that to me, it represents creation, the creation of life, the mother nature and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's a mix of a lot of things. Yeah, um, this is why I think it's so important to have um, lots of different stories um, come to the children's illustration market because, um, you know, some of what you said, I already know, but there's, mm -hmm. there's people out there that don't know anything about what you just said. And mm -hmm. so you being courageous enough to, to create these images, even though this came out of a dream, but it's also out of your culture is important. Um, mm -hmm. Anything, I'm just going to kind of thumb through, you don't have to talk about each image, but if something, if you want me to stop somewhere, please uh, stop me because I'd love to hear more about the inspiration. Okay. Well, I can say about this one. Um, yeah, they, they represent um, uh, the, na the Brazilian uh, natives. Um, but this one specifically, um, I was inspired by a song and as a, a Brazilian song. Um, and the song is not related to, to native, um, but it's related to to nature and to love. So that's how I interpret it. Mm. And I'll just, and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, it's okay. You, you can't, because I know I have a few there. I love this one. Yeah, this one, I guess everyone knows mm -hmm. who she is. <laughs> yeah, and, but it has your style, your interpretation. It has your mark on it. So um, even though a lot of people have um, drawn this, mm -hmm. they haven't drawn it the way you have. So, And it's nice to see how the texture and the light is coming through on this piece. So this is, um, I believe, your latest book. Would you like to tell us a little bit about this? Yes. Uh, so this is actually, this is my debut uh, that came out in August. Um, so this is a story about these two uh, feuding uh, communities who 
uh, rely on their natural resources to um, nourish their community. And one day, like the, there is a, a drought, the water, they rely a lot on, on the, wa the water resources and they have no water and they go to each other to ask for help, um, but they don't um, help each other because they're protecting um, themselves, right? Good. And time passes um, and eventually there is um, another natural situation, but this time one community helps the other and they um, come to, to cheer together. So it's a story about sharing kindness, protecting the environment. It's a very beautiful story. And it's timely too, you know, if you yeah. think about um, where we are, um, I'll call it an environmental crisis, um, even though it's been slow progressing over the, the years, um, we all have to help each other. And so I think that this is a perfect um, illustration and children's book story about how, you know, we can do that. So I'm excited to read it and thank you for being a part of the creation. Thank you. All right. So I'll thumb through a few more of these. This is a yeah. nice spread. This is the first spread of the story. So there you see the, the river, that's the river. The, the, those are the mountain people um, and they collect the water from the river. Mm. Are these, um, are, is this created in, is this watercolor or is this all digital? Digital. Okay. Oh, so yeah, I forgot to say about the first ones that I was talking about, uh, they were watercolor and color pencils. Mm. This one is digital. So you have found a way to uh, mimic your, uh, those two, you know, to make those two um, media look the same. Yes, yes. That's what I was aiming for. Um, yeah, these are all, um, part of the story. And I really enjoy creating um, this book because I had a lot of freedom to uh, create the, the world, the, the, the communities. Um, and I also like, it felt like a little animation process, like the world building and the character sheets that I made for those characters and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it was very nice to, work on this book and this is a part of the character sheets that you mentioned actually no it's part it's a it's one page because this is an intergenerational story so we start in one um time in in history but, and then they there is this part that they go to the future so this is because i didn't put the text there so there are texts that goes in that uh, page um and that's them growing to the second part of the story. And if you all haven't seen Tatiana's website, um, I want to encourage you to check it out. There's actually, let's go ahead and go to this one. Um, so this image I really liked um, because it talks about, you know, um, you can see the diversity. You can see that it, it's um, pointing towards uh, literacy and books and creativity. So um, I felt felt like you did a really good job at kind of encapsulating all the things that, you know, we do as children's book illustrators um, in this one image. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. So, yeah, I can't wait to see it on the website too. I have a few more questions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I would really like to know um, what, what are the type of things, and, and I may have already kind of talked about this a little bit, but what, what are the type of things that really inspire you when it comes to choosing your subject matter or, um, or just in your, your work process? I think as an artist, I'm inspired by everything that surrounds me, like my personal experiences. I mentioned my dreams, like my memories, childhood memories, nature, culture, music. Mm -hmm. Oh, and when I say music, it's usually Brazilian music and like the lyrics, also the rhythm and the, lyri the lyrics, um, because like being an immigrant, music helps, me, makes me like closer to my culture. Like, so I'm, 
I'm really inspired by that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and do you have any other books you'd like to talk about? Um, sure. Um, I have my next books coming out um, May 21st. It's called Abuelo, the Sea and Me, written by Ismay Williams. Um, and it's a story about uh, a grandfather and a grandchild. They walk through the beach season by season and Abuelo, the grandfather, he shares his experiences in Havana, Cuba with uh, his grandchild. It's a very emotional book. And for that book, I, I was able to um, put a little bit of my story with my grandfather as well, who had recently passed away when I received the manuscript to illustrate that story. Mm -hmm. So um, I, when I asked you those last two questions, the one about inspiration and the one about your books coming up, um, I was thinking, I'm like, did I ask those questions in the right order? And I feel like I did because um, my next thing is like, how do you bring your life yourself into your images? And you kind of answered my question. It seems like there is some influence from your own um, present and past that makes its way into your art. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I'm not very good at expressing myself with words sometimes. And I do that through my work mm -hmm. um, visually. Mm -hmm. So yeah, every piece that I make has a part of me, is a part of me. Yeah, that's your superpower. You know, I feel like artists sometimes we, exactly, <laughs> sometimes we don't have the words, but we do have this other, I'll, I'll call it a sixth sense or a, a different way to communicate that not everybody has a way to communicate. So um, it's a gift, it's a gift. So tell me a little bit about what made you join SCBWI. Well, so I, I immigrated to the US as an adult. 2014, 2015 was my first time, uh, my first the uh, first classes that I take in children's books. And I learned about SBWI at the School of New York. And I joined um, because I was I wanted to learn about the industry and find community. All right. And so um, are there any ways that we can learn more about your artwork? So I've, I shared a lot of the images on your website. Um, but there's still so much more that people can learn about you um, on the website. Share your website or any other social media places that we should follow you. Yeah, sure. So my website is tatianagardel.com. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram. And the handles are the same. It's at Gardel, G-A-R-D-E-L, Tatiana. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy that we were able to finally feature you. I know that it's been a long time coming um, because I've been looking at your work for a while, um, but I'm so happy that today has finally come and we can feature your artwork on the website. Thank you so much, Tamika. This was great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.